So next, we head over to the Cardinals page. So we're gonna click on the first link here. And I click on download. So I'm gonna go with installer image because I want a complete control over my hardware access. So I click on this. And it brings me to the latest version of Kali Linux, which is 2024.4. Here there are two options, and this one is selected for me already. So I'm gonna go with the installer, which says complete offline installation with customization. So I'm gonna click on this download icon here, and it's asking me to save. So I'll choose my desktop and I'll click on save. So I have the Kalinos being downloaded here. I will get back to you once the download is complete. I have Kalinos here on my desktop. So I'm gonna click on new, which could stand for new installation. And here, I need a name. So you could call it anything you want, but for easy identification, I'm going to call it Kali Linux. So the next is um, the ISO image. So I'm going to drop this down. Click on others. And I go to my desktop. And I click on the ISO image and I say open. That is the Kali Linux ISO that I downloaded. So with this, it's just taking care of these uh, settings here. So I can say next. And this is asking me to choose my hardware. You can modify virtual machines hardware by changing the amount of RAM and virtual CPU count. So here, I have a two gigabyte of RAM selected by default here. I don't want to change anything here. So I want to go with the system default. So I go to next. Now I said create a virtual hard disk now. And it has given me 25 gigabytes. Now, one thing about this is that I want to be using this installation for a very long time. So, and also I have one terabyte of hard drive. So I'm going to allocate 50 gigabytes to my Kalinos installation. You can decide to go for 30 gigabytes, 40 gigabytes, but I want to go for as much as 50 gigabytes. So this option is if you have installed a virtual hard drive before, you can make use of this. Then if you don't want to add a virtual hard drive, you can choose this, but I need a virtual hard drive for my new installation. So this is the first installation I'm doing on this system. So I need to create a virtual hard drive. So I click on next. And here is a summary of everything I have. And you can see the ISO file here and the folder where I'll be installing the virtual machine. So all I can do is say finish. and I have created my virtual machine. So this is like a PC on my main physical PC. So this is the virtual PC where I'm gonna install the Kali Linux. So what we're gonna do right now is to click on start since everything is being added, both the ISO files. Now in case, I forgot to add the ISO file. I can come to these settings. Then click on storage. Click on this add. Then I will click on add again. Then I'll navigate to where I have my Kalilinos ISO file, which is this. I will click on it and I will say open. 
and here I'm going to say choose and you can see I will add my ISO file but because I have it already I'm going to get rid of one so I'm going to remove this one so that is how to add your ISO file in case you didn't add it while creating your virtual machine so I'm going to say cancel. So it's time to now power on our virtual machine. So we start by clicking on, on start. So I click on show to display. All right. So here I have Kalinos installer menu. So I will press a key. To continue so I'm going to use the down arrow to go down or up arrow to go up but here I'm going to choose graphical installer and I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and uh, here is the installation proper I'm being asked to select a language and English is my language so I say continue now I need to select my location. Configure the keyboard. So what you choose here depends on what you're familiar with. I'm going to leave it on British English. Now say continue. It says configure the network. Please enter the host name for the system. The host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. If you are setting up your own home network, you can make something up here. So since we are not uh, into networking or whatever, why don't you just use a name which you can use to identify yourself on the network? For me, I'm going to just go with Kali. Then I'm going to say continue. And uh, here is the domain name is a part of your internet address to the right of your host name. Now here, I'm going to leave it open as long as it allows that. So I say continue. And here it says set up your password. Now enter your full name for the new user. And remember, as a hacker, you have to think about your own personal security so it would be a very bad idea for you to put your name here all you are required to do here is to set up a name that you can use which is not your personal name so here i can choose anything so here i'm going to use the the name mr right it doesn't mean anything So I'm going to say continue. And again, username for your account. I'm going to use that Mr. Right again, but you have to remember it because you're going to use it in the future. So I say continue. It's time for me to choose a password. And like you know, we are in the business of security. A secured password would be the best option here, which consists of lowercase, uppercase, symbols and numbers now if you put your password you have the option to see it by clicking on this button and also by clicking on this button so i'm going to change my password now while i'm checking this and i'm going to repeat the same thing So I click on next. Make sure you remember your password because you're going to need it to log in. It is advisable to use the entire disk. So we'll click continue. And we are here. If you remember well, this is the 50 gigabyte disk we created earlier, whereby I said I need it for the future. So 
you just click on continue so at this junction we're going to go with the recommended and this is for new users so i'm going to say continue and here there's nothing to choose here so we'll just say continue and here is that write the changes to disk we have to say yes so say continue so the base system is now being installed so here only the core of the systems is installed you can check on this to add them but for now we are good to go so i say continue and uh, this software installation it takes some time so you can go do something and come back to see how far the installation has come And this says install the grub boot loader look at this it seems that this new installation is the only operating system on this computer if so it should be safe to install the grub boot loader to your primary drive but there's a warning here if your computer has another operating system that the installer failed to detect this will make that operating system temporarily unbootable, though Grub can be manually configured later to boot it. The option we are to choose here is yes. And uh, somebody might ask, am I having one operating system on this my system? The fact is this, Kali Linux does not know about your main uh, operating system. So just say yes and we continue. Install the Grub bootloader. So we're going to choose dash dev dash sda and we'll say continue so this is going to help to finish the installation process so we are on our way to finishing the installation and here installation is complete so it's time to boot into your new system make sure to remove the installation media so that you boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation please choose continue to reboot so at this junction what is trying to say that if you did this installation through a usb flash drive it's time to remove it before you continue so that the installation does not start afresh but we didn't use the flash drive so we are good to go by saying continue And that is a uh, system booting into Kali Linux. Okay, still booting. Let's give it some time to boot. So here we have um, our username and password. So for my username, I'm gonna put my username and password. If at this junction you're unable to log in, don't worry, there is a solution. You don't have to start installation afresh. If you want to know how to reset your password or username, drop it in the comment below and I'll make a video on how to do that. So what we can see now is that we have our Kali installed, but we have it on a smaller window. So what we need to do is we're going to restore this down and click again and that is it so let's go to terminal and type uh, if config and hit enter now if you look at our inet address this ip address is not in uniform with our local area network so we need to set this 
to be in the same IP range with our local area network. So to do that, you go to settings, you come to network, and from that, we're going to go to host only adapter. I'm going to click OK. I click on show. Type again, IF config, and right now you can see that our IP address is within the IP range of our local area network. Now, if I go to CMD also, let's go and check the IP address. So I open command prompt. So I'm going to type IP config here kindly note that on cmd we use ip configuration but on kali we use if config so enter so we're going to look for ethernet adapter ethernet and this is the ip address here So you see that this is 192 168 56. So this our IP address is now in line with our local area network. So now we are good to go. So that's all for this video on learning how to install Kali Linux. If you have interest in learning cybersecurity, Subscribe to this channel and come back every week here for a fresh new video. Thank you and see you on the next one.